If you were a significant name in the Canadian Premier League, you probably ended up signing for Atletico <laughs> Ottawa. Uh, it was an impressive victory in the way that they managed to pull it out. Let's hear from their manager, Carlos Gonzalez, as well as the match winner, one of the newcomers, and Chris Twardick. Uh Wins give you air, you know, air to breathe. So this is important to start winning, to, to be calm, to know and acknowledge that we've done nothing, that we're still building a team, that we're still, we still have to work on so many things, you know. But at the same time, it's good to see uh, that a tough game, like the game that we had today, we were capable to, to bounce it back and to, and to grab the three points at home. So yeah, I'm very happy for it. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I actually, honestly, I had a vision the day before that something like that could happen just because all my friends and family were right in that section, probably about a hundred of them. And uh, as soon as I scored, I just went blind, ran right towards uh, towards them. Uh, but it was pretty special. Yeah. We'll get to Twardik's <laughs> celebration. It was a good one. Wow. A little bit later on. Uh, if you're not familiar, we should remind you of the many, many players that they signed over the course of the off season. Uh, taking a look, like Manny Aparicio, of course, uh, scored a goal, provided the assist on Tordich, Matt, Tordich's match winner. Look at the talent assembled in our nation's capital. It, it's wild. It wasn't anywhere near a complete picture. It was a little bit messy at times. It was a complete different side that we saw on the weekend, vulnerable defensively, wide open at times. As Carlos Gonzalez figures out how to put all of these puzzle pieces together, what did you make of their performance? Was it what you expected, Jordan? Um, I mean, <laughs> I would say a lot of cooks could spoil the broth. It, it could be one of those things where a lot of players coming in. But I would say to get back into a game that you're down 1-0 always shows a bit of character. This is going to be a team with their chemistry. It's going to take some time. I think Carlos Gonzalez um, will probably break down a little bit more KJ, but you're looking at how many midfielders they have and how many game changers they have and to balance that and get them all on the pitch at, at the same time. Um, it was a good start, but there's definitely some dissecting he's going to need to do to, to get the most out of this team. But any opening weekend and any time that Atletico Ottawa can Probably go down... Brilliant here, by the way. Oh, for sure. For what a finish. But any time that Atletico Ottawa can come back and, 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 and get back into a game and get three points at home, it's a good day. It's a really good day. You know, you mentioned it for me, the term game changers, difference makers, whichever your preference is. They've got a few of them now on the field, right? I mean, I, first of all, you know, the first goal, Balu Tabler is positioning in the corner. is very unusual to have a player of that uh, attacking prowess to be on the edge of the box. That's very, very intelligent for me at that point. Um, and then obviously having Manny Aparicio for his delivery in that, in that moment. He just knows how to find the, the spotlight in this league, so to speak. So, look, I thought it was uh, a game where performance-wise they probably didn't deserve to win. Uh, and York certainly deserves something out of it. But unfortunately, on the York end of things, they have a habit of leaving points on the table mm -hmm. in, in some big moments, and they did it again. It was a better team performance from the visiting side, mm -hmm. yet the team with the better talent ended up winning out. I don't think that could be the recipe moving forward for Atletico Ottawa, but it was good enough this weekend. There are, will be questions about the way that certain players are being utilized. We pointed it out in, 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 a, in, a, in a broadcast over the course of the weekend. Ollie Bassett, the best player in the Canadian Premier League, arguably over the last two seasons, KJ, has shifted from playing in the middle of the park to playing wide right. Now, he did come in from time to time. But you took a closer look at the role that he was playing. What did you see? Yeah, I think this is fascinating. Let's break down some clips. We saw glimpses of it last year when they tried to figure things out. He played wide left in Halifax, for example. Uh, but there are some situations where I'd like to really get into. So we're going to play this, and I'm going to pause it in crucial areas to show the system. Didich picks up the ball here. There's Twardik. We give it a little bit of a pause there. You can see this is their system, essentially. Didich is there with Singh. At that point, you can see... Zapater drops back into the back three, simple, and then you've got your fullbacks, Twardik and Debrien, but no Aparicio to be seen at this point. So played through, so that's Aparicio at that point, and then there's Bassett, and crucially in a right, wide right area, which I think is fascinating to see. Now they did mix it up a little bit and bring Sissoko there to do the press at times, but as you play in this crucial moment for me, this is interesting, there's your back three again. And instead of focusing on Ottawa for a second, I want to focus on York and where the space is. And at this moment, if this is Twardup making the run on the right-hand side, this is Sissoko here. And this is where last year, Jordan, we saw a lot of Oli Bassett. Yes. In the pocket, not beyond the ball, 
ball received to him, allow space to develop. It's all about finding Bassett's space. And for me to not see him in that position is an interesting one to be played through. I just want to pause it right there quickly. If we could we just, just pause yeah, it, yeah, just sorry. Just what I'm noticing as well. Look how many Atletico Ottawa players are, are ahead of the ball right now, yeah. KJ. You have Ali Bassett about to get on there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the balance for this side? Wheels, when we were watching this game, right, this is literally an Atletico Ottawa team that's been flipped on its axis. Before, they're always thinking about what could happen if we lose the ball. Get behind Now, the ball. Yeah. it's contrary. We're going to go for it. Yeah. There's no balance. If Ali Bassett right now loses it, yeah. York United are going Transition, forward, which, and they have so many numbers. Which could have happened right there. Exactly. Aparicio picks it up here at this point. But this is interesting because Bassett is basically playing a right wing, wing role, trying to win the ball in one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, he gave the ball away 22 times. It was a team high yesterday. Fascinating to think that. But again, here's the system in place. You can see Debrian and Twardup playing wide inside. You got Zapater. Watch this pass now from Sig. He goes long. Who's playing that pass to? Who's he playing it to? He's trying this, to find Bassett. Bassett's right there. <laughs> he's, the, he's beyond the ball as a number nine. And what happens when you see when you recycle it, play it through again. He just gets out of the out of the play. And for me, in these areas, this is where I want Bassett here on the ball there, not Sam Salter. And in the end, Bassett now becomes in this position and he's running beyond the ball again. I want Bassett here in this position in particular. So it's one thing to say what we want. What does Con Carlos Gonzalez want? He's played this by design. So what can we imagine that Carlos Gonzalez wants from these positions? Play it through. What we can say is in this system, you can get Bassett into clear areas wide on the, in, 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 in this position to create moments where this is where I would imagine him would be in Sissoko. But when he gets this, this pass here sets up the corner that he actually Bassett takes that led to the first goal. This is the other one, the, the big moment in the match. And again, you can see Twardup plays a huge role in this. Watch Twardup, pause it there for one second for me. Just go back a little bit if you don't mind. This here is where York United lose the game. This is where York United lose the game. Ricci and Twardup, and Bassett plays a role in this. Again, they know when to go long, we'll play it through. Did it, should get involved, goes long. Where is he going? Look again, the aforementioned Bassett, okay? Now we're gonna pause it here and watch this. Where is Ricci? Twardup's there on his own. He's gonna go beyond it. But the pass, interestingly, as you've got Bassett in one-on-one -on -one situation with that, Bassett is no longer making that run himself. It's Twardup, play it through. And the pass, I think, is really important because at that point, you set it up for the one timer over the top. And now Napolisio does the rest because he goes back and wins it off. That's a really difficult ball to, to give away by Samaro. And the rest is history as they get the three points. So for me, it's an interesting system, guys. And, you know, I'm trying to think about what Con Carlos Gonzalez wants out of this. One comparison I thought about, you don't really see technical playmakers playing in a front three. One area I remember Spain, Euro 2012, when they had Xavi Alonso, Busquets and Xavi. They had Iniesta playing in that role and hold up play. So you don't have two dynamic players going beyond the ball. You have that dynamic play. So there's a lot of areas that I think Carlos Gonzalez and his coaching staff have thought about. But the one thing I do think about is that I'd be fascinated to know what Oli Bassett thinks of it. Because what might be best for the team, I don't think is best for him. He was Golden Boot winner last year, player of the year before. And I know Bassett, maybe in his final year of his contract, maybe they're thinking beyond this year. There's a lot wow. of things into this. I don't know. Uh, but it's early, but that's what we're in this business for, is to dissect these things. And it's fine to speculate, because watching this 90 minutes, Ali Bassett is being sacrificed. Whether that is by design, it's, he's being sacrificed. Because he was the one last year to get the ball and to create the tempo. And the one to go up, if they're playing fast, everything. for sure. Yeah. Now... What's happening, granted, this is a York United team that played well, but when you're playing Calvary, when you're playing Halifax, when you're playing Forge, someone is, is giving it to Ali Bassett because now he's not a guy finding space. He's the one going to be tackled. You're asking him to go, be able, asking be him to go and try to hold up or, or combine. There are things that Carlos Gonzalez needs to get right because he has a lot of studs, superstars on his team. But you still have to get your players doing what they it's do just best. Just taking your best player and putting him in a different position. You don't see it all the time. But hey, when you live in Hollywood, sometimes you need to play different <laughs> roles and sometimes it works. Jim Carrey, Eternal Sunshine, completely different genre for him. We'll see if this works for Ali Bassett as well. There's been highs and lows for Atletico Ottawa from the start. Their expansion year, eighth, then to first. Incredible. Last year, just one win in their last eight games, finishing sixth place. And you felt the pressure emanate through the entire club. Not just the players, the coaching staff, like their fans, everyone felt it. And what happened last season simply can't replicate itself this season. And now they have even more pressure because of all these marquee signings. They've gone above and beyond, and they become 
the it club in terms of talking points in the Canadian Premier League. The manager has to get it right. But KJ, this isn't naturally in his profile, at least what we've seen from Carlos Gonzalez, being able to play with all these attacking weapons. Meanwhile, having the the ability to maintain that defensive structure and shape. So what do you make of the challenge? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm fascinated by it because uh, I don't think Carlos Gonzalez by design is a negative defensive coach, um, but that's what we've seen in the first two years. You showed the stats and the finishing positions. Uh, they had 43% uh, of possession uh, the year they won. Last year, they had 43% possession. The year they won, they were seventh out of eight in penalty box entries. Last year, seventh out of eight in penalty box entries. The difference was starts. And once they got behind in games last year, they could not recover. They started well in the year and they held the leads. So it's great for me to see that they were able to come and win a CPL league match for the first time when they've trailed. Uh, and I think Carlos Gonzalez is an outstanding coach. But now is the time to show what he can do to get the best out of these players. Uh, and I think it'll be fascinating to watch, but I do think there'll be growing pains. I think one, too, an area that we need to talk about, if you're looking at the number nine position, the way that this team plays, I know Tabla, even his best season uh, for 2022, there were seven goals. Um, Ollie Bassett, great from the penalty spot, great at free kicks, but... Are they a team that are, are going to just be combining and shooting from distance? They still need a Del Campo or a Sam Salter, or if you want to play the Baloo Tabla, maybe at a false nine, but someone to cause havoc for the other teams. Great. It's early, but I just don't know who that gentleman is. By the way, um, the first game for York United under new ownership, the Pascal brothers, big venture for them, and we'll see where this ends up. Disappointing way to start the year because you feel like they had it. They had the chances to go out and win that game. The best away team in the Canadian Premier League last season, that close with coming from coming away with something in Ottawa on the weekend. Uh, we here at One Soccer Home for the 2024 TELUS Canadian Championship. Look at that, the 23rd. What's that, nine, 10 days away? Come on. Right around the corner. 14 teams, there'll be one champion, the Vancouver Whitecaps, hopes it, hope it's them for the third consecutive year. All matches live right here on One Soccer.